introducing my players. Uh, first up, we have Bob played by. Uh, Barska, and Bob is a tiefling warlock who doesn't want to die. <laughs> then we have the Fixer Upper and Snake played by. Ryanaga, the Fixer Upper, is a half orc war priest, and he will prevent Bob from dying, from dying, at least try to. And then Snake is a Yanti uh, sorcerer of the Draconic Persuasion. Marvelous. Uh, then we have Melrath played by. Uh, Starmie827, and Melrath is a dwarven eldritch knight. And just in time. Uh, Tristan is played by. Will, and Tristan is a divination uh, wizard kobold who does not care about anyone else's death status except his own. Uh, that's highly specific. Tazrath. He's going to fly away. <laughs> okay. Uh, Tazrath is, as always, uh, is played by Suralene. And he is a tiefling paladin sorcerer hybrid. Marvelous. Um, with everybody all introduced, uh, huh. with everyone all introduced, let's um, do a quick recap of last time. Very quick. Um, last time, uh, the party had um, finally managed to find their way into. Whoop, into the worm nursery, uh, they managed to make off with, um, I think, two eggs, if I remember correctly. They're pretty big, so it wasn't like super super reasonable to carry them around. Um, and they mostly escaped by literally running for it. Um, and so, with that in mind, um, so you guys you guys run for it. Um, you you run as far as you can from uh, the entrance to the, the worm nurse nursery. And um, then you can hear and feel um, the approach of a purple worm. Everybody throws themselves up against the wall and just freezes. And nobody moves, nobody dares breathe for several tense moments <clears throat> as the rumbling um, you know, grows louder and louder and, and more forceful. Um, and then it kind of comes to a pause and there's some grinding for a minute as the the purple worm seems to search around um, and then to your great relief you can hear and feel the creature move off into the distance it wasn't able to detect you um, so in so doing um, you're, you're pressed up against the wall and you all take a collective breath and then to your great surprise from probably only 30 feet down the passageway that you're on you hear voices um, you didn't hear them prior to the approach of the purple worm, um, and they seem to be um, whispering. Uh, it sounds like there's actually a, a fair number of um, uh, people present. It sounds like there might be 11 different voices, at least, uh, assuming everyone is talking. Um, and you're in a little bit of trouble because this passageway goes directly to them and then directly back to the uh, worm nursery. So if they're not friendly, you're in trouble. I'll what will do you that. do? Um. We should whip them off from going this way unless they unless they're planning to steal eggs from an agitated worm nursery. Well, I mean, generally, that's why intelligent creatures that aren't purple worms are uh, present in this area. Um, it's uh, They're very, very valuable. Um, I'm going to actually wait a second. I'm going to look over at what's my uh, apprentice's name? Hane. Hane. And ask her if she recognizes any of those voices. Um, Hane scrunches up her nose and she tries to listen. It's really not clear what they're saying because there's a bit of an echo. Um, plus, they're whispering. Um, she shakes her head. Um, I, I can't make anybody out to recognize them. And for that matter, nobody present, even um, the fixer upper who has exceptionally sharp senses, um, is even able to tell what race they are just from their voices alone. Well, shall we go with our normal strategy? What is that? Yep. Fireball? No, 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 no. <laughs> so, um, are you going to be rolling a stealth roll for Bat? Sure. 
I'm trying to figure out what his anything is. So okay, so if he has no specific, um, and I'm going to pull up the entry myself, um, and I don't think he does. But if he has no specific entry, uh, bat for a, a particular stat, which he does not, um, it is going to be plus two because that's his dex modifier. And bats don't have proficiency bonuses. Nice. Oh wait, um, yeah, because stealth. No, that was not a. If that was me dragging from his decks, and that was not how that worked. No. Oh. I think. Does that do it? He dragged from the sea. Oh no, dear. That is not very stealthy, but you know what? He's ten GP worth of spirit. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. So. You send Bat down the passageway, um, and as he flaps, uh, he comes to a, a larger cavern. Um, he can see that there are, um, sure enough, about 11 drow, um, at least currently present, uh, that are on the cavern floor, and they're all kind of crouched down. Um, there's a female drow that is, um, you know, etching things out um on some some paper making some particular notation um they notice the presence of the bat um and they all look up and they see it and you know you have a degree of control over bat so you kind of just have him flap around as if he's some sort of you know random bat just going in different directions and stuff and um they all kind of look at one another and they look back at the bat and then um, one of the one of the male drow says, "Oh, actually, do you speak Elvish?" I don't know. I think I'm the only person who does. But well, then I'll I'll uh, I'll type it, and uh, if necessary, that person can translate. Nope, I don't speak Elvish. Mm. And uh, 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 Tristan sort of translates um, by, what's the word I'm looking for? Phonetics. Um, approximately what he hears them saying, and uh, that will allow Chris to translate. Ho, Chris. Yes. Hi. Hi. Here to translate. Yes. OK. <laughs> cool. Quit getting in the way. Um, <laughs> what? So that. God damn it! Like right as I was about to talk. <laughs> oh, sorry. Go. He's got a proton performance. I, I sort of do. They. They were little. They were a little bit on, on edge. Um, worried about both the worms and the bat. So. Um. I don't think the. Uh, worried about us. I don't think we're here yet. Okay. Um, so, in light of that information, um, Bat just kind of, you know, alights upon a stalagmite and kind of hangs there for a minute and grooms himself. Um, listening in on the party without me having to type a whole bunch of stuff, um, it sounds as if they are indeed planning to... Um, go through and harvest purple purple worm eggs um and they are discussing their plans um much akin to perhaps marines um you know planning an assault they have you know specific people with designated names that are acting as points in these particular locations they seem to even have a map of this nursery um which you know absolutely has to be out of date because uh 
you know, several tunnels were dug over the course of your time in there. Um, but nonetheless, if they have the general layout, they are probably going to be in a pretty good position. Um, that said, um, they seem to know that that passageway that you're in leads to the purple worms. Uh, so at some point, they're going to get up and start marching down that corridor. What will you do? Um, I don't have enough invisibility for everyone. Fireball. <laughs> the hell with invisibility. We have a shield guardian. They're going to hear that, if nothing else. If there's only... How many were there? What, nine or eleven? I eleven. Eleven. Mm-hmm. eleven. I wouldn't worry too much about that, personally. We can All find right. our way through them, if need be. Well, wait. Well, if, we, if we fight here, does the the purple worm... Hmm. Is there a threat of a purple worm coming? Oh, extremely, which means if they're smart, and it sounds like yeah. they are, they're not going to do shit. Mm. Indeed. Yeah. I mean, we don't want to fight them either, because it's just a waste of time when we want to get to Demon Lord, so hopefully we'll just go on our merry way. Okay. All right, let's do it. Okay. I'm just going to walk up to them. Um, so the, the party grits their teeth. Um, you know, you haven't had the best of experiences with Drow, but um, you're hoping that they are half as intelligent, intelligent as they pretend to be um and you just march boldly into the cavern um by the way when you come into the cavern will your weapons be drawn it takes an action to ready them if a combat occurs uh i don't uh, no mine won't anyway Uh, we don't want to fight i mean i'm just they shouldn't either yeah i'm just asking (laughs) maybe they're stupid who knows it also sets the mood Um, But anyways, so you march into the cavern, um, and once you get inside, the drow immediately leap up, and they have their hands on their scimitars, um, and they all are staring at you with a burning hatred in their eyes. Um, You know, when you come in, you have your hands up, you know, because there's nothing in them. Um, And uh, the the drow have a a snarl, and they're kind of waiting for um the female to give the order to attack um and she she's hesitating for some reason and um you're able to to sort of push far enough into the cavern that you can all kind of expand outward from the column that you had been in um and in so doing um hane pops out from behind uh the shield guardian near um tristan and looks over at the drow, and her jaw drops, and she goes, Mother! And she races out from behind the uh, shield <laughs> guardian, ran, runs across the uh, the cavern, um, and, and you know, gets all the way over there. And then there's a really awkward moment, because, like, hugging isn't a thing in drow culture. So, like, you know, just, you're well, yes, you're well as well. And it's very obvious that they were concerned about one another, but have no way of expressing it <laughs> without showing weakness. <laughs> so, um, with all of that going on, um, there's a, a quick conversation that is in Elvish. Um, Tristan is able to translate it, and then... Uh, Sorry, not Tristan. Tazarath is able to translate it. And then thanks to Bob's telepathy, he's sort of able to help the rest of the party catch up on what's going on. And there's a quick um, status report. You know, what have you done? You, what happened? They exchanged some stories around that. And then um, the question of whether or not she has been well treated by the, the party um, comes up. And then she also goes as far as to mention that um, the party is on her behalf holding a purple worm egg. And so you can hear that report being given as well. So once all of that information is done, um, the female drow steps forward and introduces herself as Zora Hallen. Um, She bows curtly um, and she she says, um, Hane has told me that you uh, are holding a purple worm egg for her. That's true. We did pick up three. One of them was reserved for her. We are actually in need of two, not simply one. But at this particular moment, um, Ahane has spoken on your behalf, and we are willing to take the egg and simply carry out our plan to begin with, rather than risk bringing a purple worm down on all of our heads. A sensible move. And I would agree to that. 
What are your terms? Hmm. To tell the honest truth, we haven't thought that far ahead. We haven't had time to plan since the last purple worm made its way around. One moment. How about a favor in the future? Yes, that would... Um, so, uh, Hane sort of smiles at this particular request. Um, Zora considers it. Um, yes. Yes, I, I think that's fair. You've literally done half our work for us. And now... I need not send in the entire party to secure another one. So that's worth something. Uh, and who knows, if I'm lucky, you'll never collect. Well, we'll be in Mantle Dareth shortly, so probably we'll need your help with that. Uh, did you mean the Tower of Vengeance? Oh, uh, you meant Menz Menzo Berenson. Menzo Berenson, yes. Um... She looks surprised to hear this. Uh, Hazarath just sort of looks, gives you the side eye, and it's just like, <laughs> I... Well, I hope that you uh, come to my door with perhaps a bit more um, discretion. Then you marched into this cavern, but so well, uh, so be it. If you make it to Medzo Berenson, I uh, will consider your request. Thank you, and I'll reach into the pack and uh, retrieve an egg very carefully. And you hand it over to her. She takes it. She seems almost surprised that you give it up. Um, she turns around and passes it to a guard behind her, who you know actually kind of heaves a bit under its weight. Um, very well. Tazareth just sort of smiles self-satisfiedly. <laughs> Please, make your way out of the cavern. We have no desire to draw additional purple worms with uh, unnecessary um, vibration. Okay. So when the party well. departs... Did uh... we give them the second purple worm egg they needed or just the one? Just the one, I believe. My understanding is the one. Nobody yes, said really that they were the other one. Yeah. Do we want to give them the other one a trade for something? I thought we had to have but one though. You. Uh, yeah, we have three. Yeah, you have a spare one. Oh, okay. You said two earlier, so I was confused. Uh, I thought it was two, but I think Chris wrote them down in his inventory. Is that right? I thought it was three as well, so you confused me. But okay, it, it, is, long... it is definitely three. Okay. 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 Um. Anyways, uh, that's up to you. You you can either give it to them or keep it for whatever purpose. Well, I. Are they? I mean, it's not like one's going to break on the or the other one will break on the way or whatever. Uh, I don't. I don't know. Do we? Can we nature or whatever the hell? Okay, I mean, so long... so so if you were to these things are about as sturdy as an ostrich egg. Okay. Um, which means that if you were to simply drop it fr from a standing position, it would shatter. Um, All right. So, so that would be a problem. That would be a problem. Mm -hmm. However, um, you do know where um, the vast oblivion is, the lair of the next beholder. So my operation operating procedure, because I'm a nice DM, is that you guys will be leaving the egg outside of the um, chamber before going in mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. um, so there's no chance that, I don't know, the person holding it gets petrified. Um, <laughs> so... I, I wasn't going to put the egg in, in imminent danger, but you know, if you felt like you wanted the extra one for safety's sake, then you can hold on to it. Um, is is there, are they worth much? Like, that's a good question. Give me a moment. Uh, I'm pretty sure I know the answer. I just want to check my answer. Probably a lot. Uh, there it is. Okay. Oh, that's scary. Uh, I got a hit from the American Journal of Hygiene. 
Okay. Um, I don't see any sources that are contradicting what I believe the value of the um, object to be. Uh, so I'm going to say that um, in all likelihood, this thing is probably worth upward, upwards of 15,000 gold pieces. Ooh. That's considerable. Yeah. Uh, not a lot of people actually succeed in stealing these things. Um, and I think you guys have a sense of why. <laughs> so um, there you go. But where would we be able to hawk this anywhere? Well, possibly Mento Berenson, but, you know, show, uh, hawking... Uh, the only people in Menzo Berenson that aren't drow are slaves. So a slave showing up with a purple worm egg to sell would draw a lot of attention. But the, And the, none of the other big cities would have probably anyone interested in this kind of thing? They might, but at the moment, um, you guys are on something of a time limit, as it is true that literal demon lords are rampaging through the Underdark trying to achieve <laughs> goals of their own. And so there's... Um... Also, Gracklestug is kind of tearing itself apart with madness. And... Want to go sell this to the nice drow lady? <laughs> Do you think she has 15,000 gold pieces individually on her? No, but she probably has something she can trade for. I mean, that's up to you. It's fine by me. Okay. Uh, give me a moment. I'm going to skip ahead to something. I need to double check. Anyway, should have fucking read this chapter. What's her last name? That's what I thought. Hallis or something? Helen. Uh, and of course, it's not quite that simple. Um, oh, that's interesting. I'll have to summarize that for you later. <laughs> well, with a successful check, I suppose. Um, okay. Uh, right. Um, That's the last thing I don't know. Well, I'll have to make it up and I'll retcon it later if it turns out to be wrong. Okay, I have my info. So you return uh, to the scene. The drow are just about to depart. Um, and you say, you know, we've thought it over. We have this extra egg. We don't actually anticipate needing it. Um, we'd be willing to part with it for a favor or, or for, for um, something of value, I suppose would be the way to put that. Um, she considers it. Well... We didn't exactly come on this trip with the uh, intent or capability to barter. However, um, I suppose I would be willing to offer the possibility that should you actually make it to Menzo Berenzen, that our house can owe you the favor instead of simply me. I'm pretty sure I can swing that. It sounds better than, I mean... It's, which it's which means of... that, like, we will act to a large extent on your behalf instead of a limited one. Okay. That sounds good with that history rule, right? Uh, the history rule is trying to assess what she's offering? Yeah, how powerful in her house is. Oh, that's that's the piece of info I was hoping that you would not check uh, with me upon. Give me one second more. I'm going to try a quick Google search. I, I've seen a fairly extensive Farron wiki. Uh, oh, here we so. go. List of drow houses. Uh, let's see here. As of 1484. A little insight on her offer as well. Oh, here we sure go. Non-council houses. Oh, good idea. Shit. Just to make sure she's not going to try and double cross us. Okay, well, here's what I've got. I'm going to set your insight aside for a moment. Assessing what you can of her house. 16 is actually pretty good. Um, here's what you come up with. Fifty second. Oh, I love that. Um, 
Her house is a non-council, non-noble family. And... Uh-oh. Hold on a second. There we go. Whew. That was a close one. Advertisement started playing. Um, her house is a non-council, non-noble family. Um, it, To the best of your recollection, she is some sort of merchant family. Um, however, that said, um, they are someone that supplies troops to the overall defense of the city. So they do have military power, um, mm -hmm. but they aren't as powerful as someone that is on the council as those people have like the biggest concentrations of military power. So if I was to put it in terms of political power, uh, it would be maybe the equivalent of a... Hmm, that's a tough one, actually. I don't quite have a good sense of how to quantify this. Um, in short, here's what I think you could actually rely on. You could rely on a military escort. You could rely on them to get you through sections of the city that you would not be able to go through unescorted. Um, you could rely on them to um, take you to a specific house and maybe get you past the front door. Um, you know, claiming we have business with House Misroom and, you know, they show up, wait in the lobby, and then at that point you depart and they do too. <laughs> that sort of thing. Um, does that help? A lot. Yes, that's more than I expected. So yes, yes, yes. I'm totally up for this. Okay. Yeah. I mean, we here... don't have a market for it anyway, so might as well. And here, here's the other thing. Um, truth be told, they actually don't list as any house in 36 references for this particular article so <laughs> uh i'm just that's what it's going to be worth and we're just going to go with that until i find something to the contrary um so there you go pass off the extra purple worm egg chris please make the appropriate notation on your sheet okay and now we will we will shuffle on over to the um you mean flump over yeah flump on over to the mm -hmm. next what is that? Delete. Uh, let me also try. I'm going to share this one and then I'm going to remove the mask because it doesn't matter. Um, so now we're going to head over, on over to the vast oblivion. So from this point, you end up going actually relatively short distance. In fact, some of the shortest distance you've traveled in the Underdark, a mere 12 miles. You travel this distance to um, the vast oblivion, and the the lair is in a chasm known as Kara Zikar's Maw, and it's surrounded by ten vertical shafts, because of course the beholder can levitate, so it's mm -hmm. no issue for him to ascend or descend those particular shafts, and um, he's using that to his advantage. Um, they are Which way do the shafts uh, bend? Vertically? So they don't, they don't huh? like bend to the left or to the right at all. I think um, he's being dirty. No. I, I'm, I'm, I'm reusing a dirty joke. <laughs> oh, oh, I actually had no idea. Um, he's talking about penis. Yeah, I thought he was talking about me being dirty. So, no. Um, <laughs> da -da 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 -da. Oh, oh, oh. And they're honeycombed with small caves used uh, by the Beholder's followers and slaves. So what you're really coming across is um, the equivalent of a very small city, like a hamlet, in essence. Uh, that's the number of slaves and followers that we're talking about. So can we roll to tell if the slaves are insolent? I, yes. Yes, you can. Okay. What would I roll? Perception. Okay. That's you are four. uncertain to the insolent nature of these slaves. <laughs> Brazen thievery. Oh, I have to roll? Yeah. So when you come... Uh, I thought you... we were joking. <laughs> no, every. Wow, nobody can tell whether these are insolent <laughs> slaves or not. We suck. 
I mean, hey, get all those ones out of the way now. now. Okay. Yes. All right. Ah, yay. The slaves are highly insolent. So, all right. As you guys good are job, approaching, guys. the Viserun's directions are actually remarkably good in terms of locating this particular beholder layer. He has a lot of like location based things. It's like, you're going to find this particular stalactite. It's going to look like a shark's tooth. You find the stalactite, so on and so forth. And when you come within about a mile of uh, the actual layer itself, um, you start to feel this growing sense of being watched. And I'm actually going to grab the fixer upper's um, perception roll. Um, you catch the, a glimpse of eyes peering out at you from the shadows. Um, now you see them and you're sure that you see them, but as soon as you try to focus on them, they just close as if an eyelid went over them. Um, you know, obviously uh, the fixer rep is going to follow up on that. He sends Melrath over to the corner just in case it's dangerous. Um, there's nothing there. There's, there's nothing there. Um, and as you guys proceed, others catch glimpses of these eyes opening for a moment and then as soon as you look at them they close um and when they close they vanish so you get to uh, in the tunnel that you're in ends at the top of one of these exterior shafts those those vertical shafts that i mentioned um and there is actually a rope ladder yes we had time to take a long rest before we did this are you guys in bad shape? I have only level two spell slots left. Wow. Yeah, I have only one slot out of two. Yeah, there's no reason why we wouldn't have. Okay, but uh, make a survival check for me. Because you're in between two particularly dangerous sets of forces. Yeah, I'm not going to because I don't need to. Hey, you want to know what? I've got a portent uh, for the last portent of my day is a 16 plus two, so I roll yeah. an 18. Nice job. I hate portents. Next, next. next. <laughs> I can imagine you would. <laughs> uh, okay, well, um, your portent foresees no particular troubles. Uh, I have to actually do the effort, don't I? No, I have to individually. Sorry, Alex. I just wish that there was an obvious command that was just like, wait a minute, just out of curiosity. Oh, no, that, that's not the button. Okay. Uh-huh. 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 What does that do? Okay. Do, do, do. Blue screen. Huh. Okay, there's no, like, slash rest command that makes this happen, so we're just gonna... Uh, let's see here. Uh... Long, long rest. And long rest. There we go. It just seems like a really obvious thing to have a button that does that. Mm -hmm. Thanks for all that effort, Alex. I will then cast it was 30 yeah. seconds. <laughs> That's what I have to say. Oh, flump! That's what I have to say to that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> flump yourself. Yeah, exactly. And then I'm just going to do my portent for today. So now I'll have two against the beholder. Yay! That, that, and that. These are well, that's... And a third level slot. Who wants a death ward besides Bob? Couldn't hurt. Yeah, yeah. I think giving it to the people with the least hit points is probably a good idea. Okay, let me just make sure I got everyone. One, two, three, four, five. I'm short someone. Let's see. It's not Melrath. I'm so it's glad Bob. A does not a concentration spell. It doesn't add that many hit points, but... Just I mean, enough in my case. Yeah, it literally saved a player's life this game, so I think we don't have to hedge for uh, aid anymore. Anyways, um, <clears throat> so... Oh shit, my shield guardian can't fit through half of these things without squeezing. Damn. Yeah, this is going to be a um, limiting circumstance for him. But moving right along. Uh, so when you get to the top of one of these tunnels, there's actually a, um, a rope ladder that reaches all the way to the bottom of the shaft. Um, and that's going to take you all the way down to that chasm that I mentioned before. Um, 
when you you throw the rope ladder down, it unrolls for a really long distance. Like it was a pretty thick lo rope ladder bundle. And when you make it all the way to the bottom, you turn around. Uh, let me see if I can find his picture. Give me a second. This would be that one. Uh, that one. Uh, oh, well, that's not quite the one that I was hoping for. I'm looking for... Huh. Is this it? Nope, that's the same one. That's the same one. That's the same one. Oh! No. Well, rats. Okay, well, I give up. Um, you encounter the human, not the beholder. That's what the beholder is going to look like. Obviously, we're oh. here for him, so we don't need to pretend that we're not. Trippy. Yeah, so the human has um, a series of eyes tattooed onto his forehead. He has a staff mm -hmm. with an eye. Um, he has, you know, a number of things. He's dressed particularly well. Um, he is either a mage or a, a priest of some disposition. Yes. I'm working on it. Anyways, uh, so so um, he he stiffens as you turn around um, and sort of looks down his nose at you. And what can we do for you? Tazaras just gets a wicked grin on his face for a second. And just to be ex explicit, again, the beholder is not present, only uh, this this mage. Could we take the eyeball on his staff? Do you think he's just going to give it to you? I'm going to bow. And just be like, I'm assuming that you are one of the servants of whatever this beholder's name is. We got his name. I just don't. We, we did, and um, I want to say it's Kara Zakar. And I specifically want to. Yes, it is. Uh, it says on the image. Yeah, that's it. Well, we'll figure out how, what he feels like when he hears Kazar Kazar's name. Whether he's just like, I don't want to be here. I'm his like for servant, or whether he's a loyal follower. Oh, then you're going to need to roll uh, an insight check for that. Uh, I will roll insight as well. Yeah, everybody oh, that's no. rolling it, roll it now. Hey, Bob, roll insight. Wait for me. Uh, wow. Jesus. Ah, oh, shit. Can't Get them all it. out now, guys. Yikes. So, um, everybody, everybody's doing their best to assess um, Shidrak's participation in his servitude, I suppose. Um, uh, when you mention Karzakar's name, uh, Karzakar, uh, Crazy Car. What, what was that for, Bob? I'm just, I don't know. <laughs> Are you sure? Wants to... I'm going to yell at him. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Okay. Okay. It's important for me to check because there's a whole thing in here. Um, okay. uh, Don't piss him off yet. Yet. Uh, so Shidrak um, doesn't really react to Kar as a Kar's name being mentioned. Um, he seems to be just. Yeah, non reactive. Um, his face is very stony. Uh, you don't really get an awful lot out of him. He just, you know, um, he he is gripping a scroll in one hand, uh, and uh, he has his staff in the other, and he looks at you kind of like with the the same look as that picture. Yes, but what is your purpose here? What business have you with Karazakar? Well, we're on a journey to go try and deal with the demon lords that have infested the Underdark, and which pose a threat to everyone. And... Oh, I don't know how to say this. Tristan, how would you put this? You need something of great value from him in order to stop the demon lords from destroying the world. 
Yes, yes, yes. You see, a great many creatures need assistance from the beholder, perhaps with dangerous foes or mortal enemies. But generally speaking, beholders only care what you come to offer them. In my experience. He grins wickedly. Mm. Well, what can we offer you? Well, we're not here to play games all day. Either offer something or leave. This is going nowhere. Uh, Tristan and I will say, well, we have a... we. They will have left it outside and hidden it somewhere, but we have a purple worm egg. No, well... His eyes widen at that. I see. I would not have expected you to be subtle enough to obtain one unless you purchased it. Well, that means we're either skilled or rich. Both are good. <laughs> he grins again. I suppose it is at that. Well, wait, wait here. Um, he uh, walks backwards uh, to a intersection uh, and then sidesteps out, never taking his eyes off you the entire time that he goes. Um, Pause for a moment while I scan over something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> uh, Shidrak returns moments later. Um, and when he does, yes, when he does, um, okay, good. Um, <clears throat> when he does, he says, to my great surprise, it seems Karzakar has a uh, desire for breakfast, perhaps. Um, follow me. And so he leads you through a series of um, uh, chambers. And in so doing, um, he actually does not walk. He just sort of floats about an inch and a half above the ground. Um, Show off. Yeah. With his eyes on you the entire time, doesn't look where he's going in the, in the slightest, but somehow always knows exactly when to turn. Um, and so. Talk to him while we're walking. Just be like, so are you his personal slave or what i am a mage in the employ of my master willingly employed or of course he's a being of supreme power and magical capability when he slaughters adventurers he tends to give me some of their most choice items before the rest of his slaves it is not a bad life Gotcha. Something to be said for loyalty. The loyalty Unfor program is spectacular. <laughs> <laughs> like that staff, right? Oh, yes. One of a great many things. Um, it was carved for us by a master artisan and then enchanted for us by a master enchanter. And then they were both petrified and left as adornment to the lair. That seems a bit wasteful. Oh, but... but that means no one knows what this little beauty can do, and he waggles it in the air. Mm. Do we have the telepathy going on? Amongst the party? Yes, I'm assuming so, yes. Yes. Uh, just telepathy to the party. Do you want me to bubble him, and then we just beat him up? Yes, that sounds like a good idea. Don't let him combine with his master. But if he's bubbled, how will you actually get at him? Uh, readied actions and then dropping the bubble. Readied actions, dropping the bubble. Ah. Okay. Um, well, I need to know if that's what you're going to do, because if not, I'm going to be moving into the next phase of this. So yeah. That's why I'm asking the party. Let's, let's oh, 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 oh. Yeah, actually, let me, let me do, help you out with that. Ta-da! 
check to bubble X to let him let this play out. Let's. Uh, I I don't care how we deal with him first. I just want him dealt with first. Okay. Well, here's the other thing that I'll tell you. At the moment, you guys are in. Um, I'm gonna grab the shield guardian. You guys are kind of in spaces like this. These relatively narrow corridors um, leading up towards where the party is currently on the map, that sort of a thing. Um, so if you get into a fight with him, um, it'll be tight quarters all around. Meaning that you wouldn't have a lot of room to maneuver or spread out and, you know, you're as susceptible as fi to fireballs as he is. Hmm. Does that change yes. anyone's opinion? Yeah, I thought that was important info. It doesn't change my opinion at all. I... Yeah, feel free to like actually click the thingy if it does. I don't know. I, I just... I want to see the Beholder, and I thought he was taking us to him. So uh, the, He does seem to be taking you to the Beholder. Okay. okay, we'll take care of him later if we need to. He's going to lead us into a trap. Uh, right. So, um... Right. After you go through a series of corridors, um, you come to a very, very large central shaft. Um, it is... Where did they put the dimensions for this thing again? Uh, I believe... Treasure. That thing. That thing. Oh, okay. I think I've got it. Um, it is a 60 foot radius um, pit. It descends about 200 feet down um, and another 50 feet up. And if you look up, 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 up. You can actually see that the Beholder has used his disintegration ray to carve his own visage into the top of the shaft, staring down with a with a very scary looking, um, you know, grin upon everything below. And you come to this large bridge, which actually stretches all the way across this whole thing. And um, the bridge is only 10 feet wide. Um so you guys are standing two by two on it um, mm -hmm. with Shedrak, you know, a good, uh, I want to say 20 feet out ahead of you. He won't let you get much closer. And um, once you make it out onto the bridge, you make it out to the to the center and it's kind of an arch bridge. So that's also the highest point. Um, that's when you suddenly become aware that Karazakar has descended from the ceiling from the darkness that you couldn't see, uh, where you couldn't see him, um, down to the point where he's probably also about 20 feet away from the bridge itself. Um, and he makes a point of sort of um, stretching all of his eye stalks down and his central eye down at the, the party on the bridge. Um, and his, his jaw splits with a wide toothy grin. <clears throat> and he says... I hear some rich treats have walked into my my lair. Hmm. Treats, are we? Indeed, he slobbers a little bit. I wonder. You mentioned the purple worm egg, and obviously that could be a satisfying meal. But perhaps... Hmm... Where have you traveled, little adventurers? Well, most of the group was originally held in Velkenvelve. I can't say I've been there myself, but we traveled all around the Underdark and managed to escape it. And we only came back down because the entire world is under threat. Yes, yes. So world. so I heard, so I heard. But that's not the most important thing here. I mean more oh, specifically, really? what Thanks. regions of the Underdark, what places have you seen? Uh, 
Well, we've been to Gothel Grimm. He we've knocks. been to. Um. Oh shoot! Where's the Where's the secret place? The secret trading hub. Uh, Mantle Dareth. Mantle Dareth, Gontel Grimm. We've been to. What's the secret library called? Graven Hollow. Graven Hollow. Don't forget about Neverlight Grove. Neverlight Never Grove. Grove. Another secret as location. Corrupt, as corrupted as that may have been. Indeed. Um. You also mentioned, um, since it sounds like you're trying to be honest, uh, Slutolop. What's oh, yeah. left of it? And um, the last one, Blinden Stone. Um, oh, and Gaunt, technically Gontelgrim as well, uh, because, yeah. So you mentioned, rattle off a list of places. His eyes widen ever so slightly at um, the mention of Graven Hollow. However, mm-hmm. Um, being a creature with particularly large eyes, it doesn't really take perception to notice. Um, <laughs> so uh, he widens and then he says, um, have you perhaps heard of or encountered something known as the maze engine? The maze engine, I'm afraid not. Hmm. Did we hear about that when we were scrying? In the past, in the library, or the future? Wait, perhaps. I'm scanning backwards. Scanning, scanning. Mm, that one. So I will alter uh, the gem. I don't think so. I mean, unless you can more specifically recall. I don't think so. I'm just trying to. I, I unfortunately uh, played um, Neverwinter. Oh, so yeah. I, I've heard that word, so I cannot remember the, for the life of me whether I've heard it because of that. <laughs> I'm checking one other thing. Ah. Actually. Okay, Um, I'm going to reread a particular passage that um, is the closest thing the party would have been able to think of. The smell of blood fills your nostrils as you wander a maze of underdark tunnels, moving with purpose as your giant hooves crush stones underfoot. Fair's rest light reveals your shadow is monstrous, suggesting a hulking beast with a crown of horns. With your bloody glaive, you carve a swath through a forest of towering zerkwood mushrooms that stands in your way. The tunnel beyond you would confuse an ordinary mind, but you instinctively know the path you must walk. Every step brings you closer to a magma-filled chasm, lodged in which is an enormous contraption of metal and stone, a weapon capable of reshaping the Underdark itself. Ah, so yes, we um, just going to describe what it sounds like to the beholder. Is that what you're talking about? Okay, well then give me just a second. I'm going to scan ahead just a little bit here because there is a description of this. Um, the object that you describe, actually, I need I need a an artistic assistance here. Uh, this one here uh can i share this e- probably tell me if that works yes okay i don't think any of the rest of this is like well this isn't the php so it's probably nothing to worry about uh if you all open this up uh the first thing that you will see is a massive wheel everybody see the wheel yep okay this is the arrangement of the multiverse in short, uh, it is also known as the Great Wheel, um, and it just sort of roughly lays out what's in relation to everything else. And um, if you zoom in, you can see certain things are aligned with law, chaos, um, um, good and evil, uh, just like the alignment chart itself is. Um, and so the contraption that you describe actually, in a lot of ways, pretty much identically resembles this great wheel. It has a couple wheels within it for the elemental planes, the Feywild, the material plane, and the Shadowfell. Um, 
And in fact, some of the symbology is actually quite identical to this particular chart. Um, and upon mention of this, um, Karazakar becomes very still. I see. But have you personally encountered it? Mm, no, we have not. He considers that for a moment. Would you know how to lead someone to its presence? Honestly, I'm not sure where it is precisely. Um, Actually... Well, wait, do we? Who, who, who was it who had the vision of that? Um, we'll just identify that particular player. It doesn't matter. I didn't specify who had what. Um, what I, what you thinking? I'm thinking that if I scry a demon lord, I could probably figure out where he is right now and if he's near the maze engine. But true. So, However, you also think... know that he was in the presence of Fair's Rest, which means that Graven Hollow had an ability to scry that is beyond you. Oh right. Mm -hmm. Well, would Graven Hollow know where it is? Uh, if you were able to make it back to that location, yes. Oh, we know how to get there. We know how we know a place that you can take you to get there. Okay. Um Karazakar considers that and you should roll initiative. Yep. Holy shit. <laughs> Is that all of us? Yes, every person in the party should roll initiative. Does that mean he's going to fight us? Of course it means he's going to fight us. We all knew this was coming. He just wanted we're to make though. We're here to steal his eye. I mean, we could have done it stealthily. <laughs> no, we didn't. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I appreciate that. But... You guys just don't have any faith. The comedy stylings of Kyle. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> so um, here's what I'm going to say. I know that this isn't the most ideal map. They didn't provide me one. Fuck them. So what I'd like you to do is sort of arrange yourselves along this this corridor. If you want to be in the particular way that I just dropped you on the map, that's fine. But take a moment. Shuffle yourselves around. Let's not be in fireball radius. Oh, that's the wrong person. Sorry. Yeah, nobody can go any further than Fixer Upper or Tazarath. And actually, he's going to have to be on his own little section like that or something, just for example. <sighs> because of his size. That'll be about fine. Let me know when you're satisfied. Can we even get around the Shield Guardian? Uh, no, um, the game the game rules allow you to pass through um, the square of an allied creature. Um, it just counts as difficult terrain. Okay. Um, so, so you, you don't have to worry about. Thing. Yeah. It, could he be right here? Here I was saying we shouldn't clump up. As long as there isn't a player up. overlapped with the character. There you go. Well, you you don't have a choice, Chris. The point is that this is a ten foot wide bridge, and. You're, you're what on is the it. distance? What's the distance um, between Snake and the Beholder right there? Snake and the Beholder right there. Uh, hold on a second. Twenty-five feet. Yeah, twenty-five feet. So we're on regular five. Okay, I wasn't sure. Now he's he's floating out over the chasm. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm actually gonna do a little tiny bit of drawing here. Uh, I'm gonna say something kind of like this. I know it's not gonna cover all of the um, all of the map perfectly but like this is kind of the bridge okay there you go and it's ever so slightly larger than 10 feet but that should give you an approximation there you go so um right 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 okay so with that in place look there 
Um, hmm. Fascinating. Uh, so it's quite the role. Car is a car. Um, doesn't even perceptibly move. Like he's already got all of his eye stalks pointed at you. His central eye pointed mm-hmm. at you. He doesn't really have to do much to make this go but he activates a charm ray on tristan the person who'd been you know talking about we know where to go um and immediately attempts to 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 charm him tristan however um being the mental fortitude that he is um manages to shake off the effect with absolute ease um and yeah so karzakar has acted um, his central eye is not active then. His central eye is about to activate. Um, I just hadn't Does... drawn it. Okay. Doesn't he have to do that at the beginning of his turn? He. This is a narrative thingy, so it doesn't quite obey the rules that it's supposed to. Also. Does it well, really... I'm just thinking if he had his char- if he hit me with his charm ray, that meant his. I was not active, or at least face towards. Let me see here. First, I have to locate. Yeah, that should be about right. There we go. So, a centralized pointing like so, and uh, you're outside of it. And then I just want to go like that because it looks pretty. So, uh, he zaps at Tristan. Tristan um, succeeds. However, um, that's going to be his action for this because of the way that this is scripted. Um, next up is Shedrak. So Shedrak activates. Uh huh. Shedrak um, whips open the scroll and says a few words from atop it. The scroll disintegrates, and he is suddenly surrounded in a. Um, transparent bubble did he just wall of force himself no because that would look like an actual wall this is a bubble that pops up about him but luke's resilient sphere no and i do an arcana check on your turn darn it Um, oh well, I was just wanting to know if I want to counterspell it or not. Oh, yeah. oh, you know what? That's a really good point. Uh, can you counterspell? Um, can you counterspell spell scrolls? I have no fucking clue. Uh, that's a good probably. question. You attempt to interrupt a creature in the process of casting a spell. Uh, let me see here. Can spell scrolls be countered by e? Oh, here we go. Mm. Let me just make sure nobody else. Okay. just make sure there's no additional things so i found official like jeremy crawford answering of this um okay okay um i have the answer uh you can counter a a spell because according to the rules if a spell is on your spell spell class list and you use an action to read the scroll and cast the spell without having to provide any of the spell's components or use a spell slot. But cast the spell are three very specific words used there, and counter spell counters a cast spell. So yes. Um, so in that, in light of that information, which I did not know, um, yes, you can absolutely roll an arcana check to see if that is something that you would be able to counter spell. And I'm going to pop over to the PHB so that I can Make sure I have all the info I need at my fingertips. So roll your arcana check. You 
you actually don't know what the spell is. You failed the uh, the roll. Can um, the question that I had was, can I even see him? It doesn't look like it. Uh, where are you? Because I'm a little her. further. She dropped. the others. Yeah. No, no, you can absolutely see him. There's, there's a good. Oh, okay, because I'm we're following the bridge. Never mind. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I am going to do the same, obviously. Anybody else who would like to roll Arcana should do so now. If you don't, you will have forfeited the ability to do so. Three, two, one. No more rolls. Snake is able to identify the spell. He shouts out, Globe of Invulnerability. All right, um, so I will try to counter it. Okay. Don't you have to roll something? Yes. Oh, while I'm waiting Our... for that, um, unless you have a question, I was going to read the spell description for people that aren't familiar with it. Go ahead. This is a sixth level um, spell. It's concentration. Um, and a mobile, faintly shimmering barrier springs up into existence in a 10 foot radius around you and remains for the duration. Any spell of fifth level or lower cast from outside the barrier can't affect creatures or objects within it, even if the spell is cast using a higher spell slot. Um, such a spell can target creatures and uh, objects. Even if the spell is cast using a higher. Such a spell can target creatures and objects within the barrier, but the spell has no effect on them. Okay. Uh, similarly, the area within the barrier is excluded from areas affected by such spells. And obviously it has one of those, you can cast it at higher level things. I have to beat a 16, so I'm rolling charisma because that's my spell casting ability. And I fail. All right. Is anybody else attempting to counter? Because it's a yep. reaction. I'm not sure if I can or not. Do you, you have, have a counter spell? I, have a spell. I do not have it. Nope, I fuck. All right. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. I have it too. I didn't know that. That's okay. Oh, my goodness. I, kn I know that there's only a couple of spell slots for your, your character. Are you sure you want to cast it? Oh, yeah. You only have like three, right? Uh, two. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'd better save it. And then cantrips for days. Right, 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 right. Um, okay, so it sounds like uh, we've attempted twice to counterspell it, and it didn't work out. Um, oh, it's next level you get to three. Wait, Tristan, can you put in a portent for that? Uh, not if I, it? not after I've rolled. Yeah. Right. No, I don't think I have to portent before I roll. Right. Oh, that's fine. I've still got to spell magic. It's going down. Possibly. It'll just eat my turn. Um, okay. So Shidrak cast that spell to protect himself. Uh, Melrath, you are up. <laughs> All right. I'm going to run up to him and uh, I'm going to use action surge. So I'm going to get four attacks off on him. Okay. Oh, wait. That only stops spells. Yeah, that's ah. what, like, whatever. <laughs> Uh, okay. Oh, hold up a second. No, no, you're fine. Actually, those those wouldn't have been affected by it. For some reason, when I added the effect, it didn't change his AC for some reason. Unless, let me check something else. Close that. I see how it works. Okay, I'm ready. Well, um, All so right. his concentration is probably going to suck nads in a second here. Or he'll just die. Yeah, that could happen. Yep, goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Can we take his eyes instead? <laughs> I mean... No, no, no. <laughs> he sh okay, so here's what happens. Melrath surges forth to in an attempt to to take down the mage before it's too late the mage shields 
uh, Melrath brings down his his mighty radiant blade as hard as he can and just shatters the shield to pieces. Um, flecks of magic, you know, tinkle to the ground, and he just wails four times. And and by the time he's finished, Shedrak is nothing but a bloody mass on the floor, um, with with little bits of smoke coming up from the radiant damage wounds uh, inflicted upon him. Thank um, goodness he fielded those spells, though. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> better right about now he wishes that uh, he could fly too so <laughs> stupid mages so he's out Shedrak is down um, Snake you're up and things are not looking particularly great for uh, Kar as a car also Bob you're in the anti-magic cone yes so you couldn't have countered the spell even if you wanted to <laughs> Oh yeah, <laughs> the, the counter the spell that didn't matter anyway. Right, 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 right. <laughs> I am glad I got someone to waste spell slots on it though. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. All right. So. Uh, oh, and Bob, you'll be up next. Spanks. I think I'm going to burn some sorcerer points. Okay. Uh, I have to read up on this. Sure. Um, <sighs> I'm thinking the one that makes harder to save, uh, but I could be swayed if someone uh, suggests another idea. Oh, that sounds great. Yeah. No, that's very good. Okay. Also, can we remember what his awful save, the, the last beholder's awful saves were? Like, he was not very dexterous. Yeah, was it dex? Yeah, I think that's right. Do you want to know what his absolute worst save was? Uh, we did. There was one save where he was just absolute shit at it. And he got a negative one at one. He's good at constitution, but I think he's shitty at dexterity. Ah, uh, so the last beholder you fought is different from this one. Okay, gotcha. All right. Good Can I that. roll uh, to check that? Um. I'm not certain, and the reason okay. I'm I'm hesitating is because um, there are different species of beholder. Mm -hmm. However, I can I can I can see that his stat block is not the same as the last beholder, mm -hmm. but they don't mention anything in here about he's a X Y and Z beholder. Do you know what I mean? So right. I think that he's just a variant on a regular beholder, and thus, since I'm never going to tell you the actual stat numbers, it's just okay. different. Okay. Uh, well, I think this beholder's on a diet versus the other one. <laughs> I think uh, immolation with the three sorcerer points to give it disadvantage on save makes sense. Okay. Because uh, we want that to hit for sure. Oh yeah. Um. So. Hey, maybe if you're lucky, he'll aim his central eye ray at himself to put it. So out. I roll, I roll the save um, for him at disadvantage or for my advantage. I'm not quite clear on how that works. Uh, snake actions, immolation. Okay, target must make a deck saving throw. Uh huh. On a failed save, blah blah blah. Failed save also burns. Blah blah blah. End of each of its turns. The target repeats the saving throw, so he repeats it. Um, okay. So I guess that means he rolls? Yeah, but I actually don't see anything in here about disadvantage. It's oh, no, through... he's using his sorcery points to give him yeah. disadvantage. Oh, that's what I need to be looking up then. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's called um, Careful Spell. Care no, not Careful Spell. It's um, Heightened Spell. Meta Magic. Heightened spell. Uh, you can spend three sorcery parts to give a target disadvantage on the first saving throw made against the spell. Yeah, I don't know if that's a efficient cost a usage of that. Well, it, what it means is that since this is a, a, a if you need this to land, it will mm -hmm. land on the first one, and then whether or not he can make it after that, like it only affects that first saving throw. Subsequent saving throws won't be affected. But I can I can make him burn. I've well, got a three in there. But the heightened spell pertains to snakes spell immolation and nothing else. It's not. The... Oh yeah, but I just meant that um, that I can at least keep it another turn going, snake, if you want it. So keep going. Mm -hmm. 
if you want this on him, we can keep it on him for at least two turn. All right. Sounds good. Oh, right. Portance. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Sorry, Alex. No, it's fine. <laughs> so, um, I'm, I'm happier that you guys have tactics than not. So, heightened spell it is. So, what I'm going to do is a dex saving throw, and so he's going to have a minus three, I believe it is. <laughs> and then I roll this. Okay, I think a 15 is a failure. Yeah, it is to get 17. Okay, so he fails. All right, cool. Uh, so uh, I think you can drop it on him and it will work normally, the damage I mean. Okay. I kind of, I had to modify his dice so I didn't roll it like I would regularly. If it doesn't work, I'll fix it. All right, that was a terrible roll. Oh, wait, uh, it's a 19. So it's oh, plus no. two. It's 20. It's 20. <sighs> All that. Oh, well. Uh, okay, well, he'll have to make those on subsequent turns. Wait a minute, what is that? And I remove the three sorcerer points. I will keep track. Okay. Um, that, uh, is there anything else, Snake? Do you want to move nope. or anything? Okay. No. Bob, you're up. After Bob will be the fixer-upper. Okay. okay. So I have to move out to cast a spell, right? Mm -hmm. And then I can move back in afterwards? You could, yes. Okay. One, two, three. Yeah. Get your noises ready. Oh, so wait a minute. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. I the, what the, is the wrong direction. He succeeded on his side. saving throw. Oh, so half as much. Okay. Yeah. Drop all your dice on it. Let's see how lucky you get. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, 16 points of damage from Necrotic. Um, <laughs> you, you, you you thrust your arms out and make your favorite slurping noise. Um, and and uh, car is a car. Um, it is indeed drained. Fluids seep out of him and mostly fall mm. into the abyss beneath him, but um, you're, you're still able to, to suck away parts of his delicious life essence. Um, marvelous. So, Loop. there you go. Back into the eye ray, or central eye cone. Uh, Fixer Upper is up next, and then it will be Shield Guardian. So well, not really. Since, It'll be Tristan. Since he's levitating, when, yes. if Hold Monster succeeds, what does that do with him levitating? Does he just stay up there? Uh, hold on a second. I'm pretty sure I know the answer to this. I want to try to double check my answer. Okay. And if he does wind up dropping into the abyss, how are we going to save the eye? <laughs> that's, that's a good follow-up question. Uh, mage hand. <laughs> yeah, mage hand. All 200 feet. Um, Someone took telekinesis, right? No, that didn't happen. <laughs> No, that's, I could. That's just the uh, that's just the the beholder, unfortunately for you. Um, I believe what happens is that um, he just won't be able to rotate his central eye because he's oh. rotating his entire body. Okay. All right, flame strike it is then. It's a deck save, so maybe we'll get one. Uh, a minus three really is quite nice to that. So yes, that's quite good. You do actually still have a very good point. Um, if he drops into that abyss, it's going to be quite difficult to get a hold of that eye. Yeah. Hmm. That. <laughs> <laughs> that. That eyeball is like. Well, could Tristan fly down and then grab it and fly up? I don't. Or is it a pure abyss? Like I don't understand. Oh no, no, no. it's it's a two hundred foot chasm. Like it just goes oh, okay. straight down. Okay. Yeah. So there's I a way. Make, I yeah. can make my thing fly. It's just would it pop if it hit two hundred feet on the ground? Would it just turn into a gunk? I, I would not be that cruel to you. Yeah. <laughs> That's good to know. Thank you. <laughs> Thank so, you, yeah, like... Mister Kind DM. <laughs> Oh no! Let me roll a d10. Oh, he fell on a stalagmite at the bottom, and his eye pops, and now you have to kill another he one. He impaled his central eye. Um, I got the fly spell prepared. There... Do it. Yeah. Okay. All right, I'm gonna flame strike it. We'll need the time stone to turn back time and then grab it. <laughs> oh, it's a failure. 
Okay. I don't uh, think he could have made that spell except on a nat 20. I mean, made that save on except on a nat 20. Mm. Uh, that is not accurate. Uh, but regardless, 28 points of damage is significant. Um, Very nice. Karzakar was not prepared for uh, that particular attack. Um, the the column of flame burst into existence in the air, um, uh, uh, f- further scorching him beyond the immolation itself as radiant damage also uh, uh, sears at his uh, uh, dry beholder flesh. Um, anything else before I pass turn? Um, I think I'll move into the anti-magic zone. Okay. Has anyone got rope? Give it to the shield guardian and let it lasso it. Well, it's the shield, shield guardian. Is not working right now. Yeah, he's actually in <laughs> the eye ray right now, so we pass his turn. Uh, Tristan, guy. and then it will be Tazareth. I cast Conjure Elemental for an air elemental right behind the behold. Okay. Library, Monster Manual, NPCs, Alphabetical Index. Because as we learned last time, the more targets. Right, exactly. The more you know. Uh, let's see here. So Cannon first of all, really helpful. let's make sure that the air elemental is aligned with the party. That's a good step. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. Okay, and I assume it's going to be right about there? Yes. Marvelous. Teleports behind you. Um, I have the air elemental inserted into combat. He actually acts before you, ironically, so I guess he doesn't act now. Wait a minute. Does Contra Elemental say anything about the order in which things pop into? You call forth an elemental servant, choose an area, blah, 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 blah. blah it blah, may blah. say things like acts after you in the initiative order. Roll initiative for the elemental, which has its own turn. Okay, so he's just going to act later. And doesn't get to go right away. What now? Uh, I'm going back into the nice anti-magic zone. Okay. 10, 20. Yep, that's about as far as you can go. Um, okay. Next up is Tazarath, and that's the end of the initiative order. The Beholder will act after your turn. All right, I'm gonna move there. Uh, let's see, I've got extra attack. I'm gonna cut. I'm gonna chuck a couple of javelins at this bastard. Okay. Um. Don't hit the eye. I'm gonna aim Whatever for its you side. Do. Sheesh. Mm-hmm. Okay. Roll damage. All righty. Uh. Second one. I'm rolling poorly. Um, but there's that. Uh, that's two javelins chucked at this thing. And then what else do I have? I've got a bonus action wherein I can summon a spiritual weapon right behind it to stab it in the back. Or what passes for a back. Uh... Uh, oh right, that's not actually a monster. Let me try. And that. suddenly you see the the air elemental holding up a gigantic sword. Congratulations, you've summoned a ancient um, elithid. Well, that was a a miss. Uh, utter fail. Indeed. Yes. Uh, unfortunate, but the, them's the breaks. Uh, any other moves before the end of your turn? Um, this square is in the range, right? Yep. Uh, on the end of your turn. He makes a roll. Okay. And... One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Uh, just before... Well, no, he can't actually do that. I see. Ah! Um... The Beholder target Snake with Petrification? And you are now restrained. Uh, You have to repeat the saving throw on the end of your next turn, and on a success it ends. On a failure, you are petrified until freed by greater restoration, spell, or other magic. 
That was on a success roll? Oh, okay. Wow. Wait. No, he saved. Oh, god damn it. It's the second time I've made that mistake tonight. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay. Let me get rid of that restraint. Whoa. Yeah, there we go. Uh, okay, so the petrification rate is uh, ineffectual, uh, which means now it is ca uh, Karza Kar's turn. And... Oh, also, Alex, yeah. could you tell me if, any, if uh, Karza Kar aims a death or a disintegration rate anyone? Because I'm saving my high portent for that. Okay. Um... He shifts... Actually, let me think about this for a second. Hmm. I need AC is that. Um, yeah. Okay, so the air elemental is going to get a tax of opportunity. Or an attack of opportunity. Okay, one second. Yep. The spiritual weapon does not, correct? It does not. It's not a creature. Um, okay. Actually, can I let me make sure I got my... Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Okay. Ouch. And that nope. was actually only half, so let me roll the other half of that. Just minus five from it because it did not double the damage. It was two d eight normally. Yep. Okay. Uh, I'm all ready. Wow. Add that to the there. The That's creature is now. Yeah. Yeah. The creature is actually bloodied. So uh, car as a car attempts to um, well actually just pass through the air elemental, um, and the creature buffets it severely, uh, battering it about, um, and it kind of you know spins. Uh, uh, out of control for a moment, manages to right itself shortly thereafter. Then it whirls around and targets it with the um, anti-magic ray, um, which I believe causes it to pop out of existence. Yep, until he looks away from it. So keep it there um, until he looks away. Okay. And then he has to roll against uh, the emulation, correct? Yes, uh, at the end of his turn. Or does it right. say beginning? Did I misread? Uh, it is... At the end, yeah, you're right. Okay, just making sure because there are mm -hmm. some that do at the beginning. Right. Oh, okay. Uh, so let's see here. So I need one, two, three. Okay, no duplicates. So I have that one. Uh. That one. Okay. Uh, let me check one other thing. Um, that actually doesn't tell me. Oh, but this does. Okay. Um, Tristan. You are being targeted with a death ray. Yep, I am giving myself a 13 plus whatever modifiers. We're going to say... Dex? Okay, I got a 19. Okay, uh, so I don't have to worry about that one. And then I just have to choose targets for these two. Okay. Uh, all right. Wow. Uh, Bob, uh, a beam lances out, one that you actually haven't seen before. Uh, when it hits you, horrific visions assault your mind, but you are, well, you're friends with a great, great ancient evil. Um, so this is kind of nothing. Um, so you just sort of shrug <laughs> it off. And then... Yeah, bitches. <laughs> uh, there. Ah! Okay. Uh... Wow, I can't actually copy any of these effects. You've been hit by a slowing ray, so you're under the effect of a slow spell. Uh, okay. That means that your speed is halved for uh, the next minute. You can't take uh, reactions, and um, 
you can just either... choose action or bonus action. Right, Correct. and not both. Uh, and then you can repeat the spe- uh, saving throw at the end of your turn. All right. That's okay. fine. So I did all of those things. Right. Uh, next up is Melrath. I don't think he's going to get another turn, but we'll see. I'm not. I'm not super optimistic either. Okay. Uh, was that a javelin? <clears throat> oh, chromatic orb. Uh, so Melrath flicks his wrist, and uh, chromatic orb pops into existence, sails across, and then right past the beholder. Uh, he moves into the anti magic beam, and Snake, it is your turn. Five, ten. Hmm. I may not be able to get out of here without doing something. Five, ten. No, you could get next to yourself. Well, is that five? Uh, yeah, but they're you slowed, right? Uh, no, that's or, only that's only. It's difficult terrain, is what I meant. Yes, that is difficult correct. terrain. Yeah, that's the inhibiting factor. Uh, so I see 5, 10, 15, 20. You can make it to right next to Fixer Upper with 25 feet of movement. Yeah, oh, okay. that's what I was saying. I was kind of hoping that um, Melrath's move somehow screwed me <laughs> so I could yell at him. <sighs> I don't want a solution. I want to be angry. Yes. All right, you're out of the anti-magic beam. You won't be able to get back into it, though. All right. Um. Uh... So many options. We know his deck saves stinks, um, so I'm not going to use Colon of Cold. Uh, I guess a fireball is never a bad thing. Uh, okay. I assume you won't catch the air elemental in that. I don't want to. No. Air elemental is not there. Uh, that's awkward. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, technically, the the magic can't expend in, extend into the cone anyway. So. Oh, that's true. Oh yeah. So I guess you could aim like. Just to the right and behind of the beholder. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't you really can, matter, does it? You can make it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Where are you, Mister Beholder? Wow. Wow. His deck save must be terrible. Well, he's rolling badly anyway. That too. Yeah. But it's not great. No. Not in the least. To to Snake? Oh, whoops. Oh. (laughs) (laughs) Oops. Sorry Uh, about that. I was like, wow, I I partially absorbed that. Cool. Did you have uh, 10 hit points? Apparently, yeah, I, I gave ten hit points to everybody but myself. Okay, oh, so uh, sorry. You should, have, you should have fifteen, mind 15. you. Okay. Okay. Well, then I why don't Bob and Melrath? More... Because I only have one fourth level slot. Oh, and you had to do multiple casts. Yeah, I had to do two casts. Okay. One at fourth level, one at third. All right. Can I roll now? Sorry. Yeah. All right. Okay. Um, <sighs> Another terrible roll, but that's plus four. Plus four brings this to. Okay. Plus four isn't added. He's still up. Good for him. Anything else before I uh, push on? No. All right. Bob, you are up. Finish him off, Bob. Okay, I just realized Blight has a 30-foot casting. Oh, uh, he was within range when you cast it initially. Right now, five. Okay. He was. And you, yeah, you can move into it now, too. And actually, if I go like that, uh, I mess over Bob. Uh, Does that work? No. Maybe. It actually doesn't. Be... Yeah, oh. you have to be there, which is going to be 35 that, feet. This one? The one right above that? No? No, it's still not going to be close enough. Yeah. That one doesn't? Oh, man. You would have to take my spot. How about right there? That's oh, actually 30 I, feet. And it's on the very the edge. No, you're outside of it. Okay. Nice move. Yeah. All right. 
Oi. Get those suck Suck him to death. Oh, wait, actually, we <laughs> forgot something. Huh? Um, Mr. That? Beholder did not make his save to see whether or not he took more burning damage. Oh, that's really important. Um, oh, yeah. forgot about that. Where is his is a deck save? I need yes. Did it here? No. Where did I get that from? Oh, I know where I got it from. <clears throat> He got a 10. That's a failure. Wow. So, 46 damage. Yeah. So I just, I'll roll that in the, in the chat, I guess. Mm -hmm. And I'll, I can apply it from there. That's plus one. Okay. So I'm going to do this. 14. And then... I would love it if that killed him. <laughs> it did no, not. No, 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 no. That's bad. No, we we, we want you to get the kill here. Spell. No. If the damage from this spell kills a target, the target is turned to ash. Oh, yeah. Oh. So be sure to kill him now. All yes. right, I'll try. Woo. I'm getting my sucking ready. He oh. succeeds. Oh, I was going to use that three. Ah, okay. Um, Can you roll it again and see if we can get a failure so the dice rolls properly? Who, me? Yes, you. What's going on? I'm Will has a three in his portent and was going to use that if you had waited like two seconds. There we go. Now roll it. I don't want the dice to calculate them properly. Now roll what? Damage? Mm -hmm. I'm so confused. It's okay. Just do it. He gave you a free. <sighs> there we go. Oh my Success. gosh. Yeah. So, nope. He's still quite up. I mean, it tells you automatically if he dies, so it's not like I can... Right. Right. So, um, yeah, you reach out with Blight, and this time you get a good, solid grip on that Beholder Essence and just... <laughs> I can never look any of you in the face ever again. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone should just be glad that he doesn't cast um, Hunger of Hadar. Mm. Oh. <laughs> oh, no. Do I have enough left to move? Boop. Uh, yeah, you should. Can and I fit there in you that square? You have to go to that square. In fact, you can't be there. You have to be here. But yeah, oh, so okay. you, can, you can do that because you're going to push through Melrath. Um, okay. As long as I, I, how, does, how does that work? Like, do you... Do you only use what you need? So it's when you pass through a square... No, no, no. I mean, if you move and then attack and then move again, it the, your, all your movement needs to be 30? Yeah, yeah. The total okay. number at the end of your turn has to be 30 or less. Gotcha. Okay. I'm using my other 5th level spell to flame strike him again. Looks like he failed again. <clears throat> Sucks to be him. Do it. Do it. Do it. There Yay! it goes. Um, fortunately, Flame Strike is what ends up taking him down. Ultimately, yes. <laughs> Sorry about that. The, the Beholder <laughs> bursts into flame, um, and the column of fire does not vanish before you can see his um, charred corpse limply falling into the abyss below. Now, as soon as that does happen, the um, Central eye pops off, and that means the air elemental pops into existence, and that is the moment that Tristan has been waiting for. Um, so the air elemental is sent to fetch Karazakar, um, and he manages to catch him partway down the uh, the chasm, um, and then return him to uh, the bridge itself. Good boy. <laughs> exactly. He didn't make one deck save at all, did he? No. No, he did no. not. Ugh. What's his dex modifier, if you don't mind us telling us now? Uh, well... Negative 7. There's a... Um, I don't think there are any more beholders for the rest of the game, so I guess it doesn't matter. Cool. Uh, it is a plus 2. Oh. Oh, okay. He just rolled crappy. Yeah. Really right. crappy. <laughs> um, so, yeah, he literally rolled a 1 at one point, so... Um, yeah, go ahead. So anyways, Kara's uh, corpse is uh, uh, brought up to the bridge. Um, and uh, when he is returned to the bridge, you guys have a moment where you're like kind of nervous because his the eyelid on his central eye is closed. Um, and you don't, it, you aren't actually certain that you've ever seen a beholder like close the eyelid on their central eye. Uh, maybe it's a function of death, um, but you sort of, grab the, the 
the smoky lids and kind of peel them back and there's a there's sort of a, a wet sticky noise like uh you know tape being peeled off of a microfiber couch um, or blight the sort of sound that uh, principal skinner loves hearing yeah yeah exactly oh. So you kind of peel everything back, and uh, the the central eye is a bit scorched, but it looks like it's probably mostly good. Um, So now you all have the uh, very fun uh, uh, task of sort of figuring out how to harvest this thing. Um, and, And who, in fact, should do the harvesting? My strength score says no. I'm going to go investigate the dead mage. Um... (laughs) Uh, it looks like Melrath has the highest strength in the party. Oh, don't we have a couple max strength people? Oh, no, Fixer Upper, I'm sorry. You also have, uh, yeah, uh, strength. Also, um, Tristan is just going to call over his shoulder. By the way, I just got prestidigitation as a cantrip. Don't worry about the math. <laughs> <laughs> so Fixer Upper and Melrath um, both sort of do their best to get a, a good uh, position on this thing. Remember, it's a large creature, so it's much bigger than you guys. Um, and you sort of, you know, have to have to take one hand and just kind of shove it around the inside, the back part of the, the, the eyeball. And you both are kind of pulling and pulling, and there's like, there's a lot of suction. It's like mm. really in there and just... <laughs> That's the theme of this game. <laughs> Suction. And it comes right out. Um, yeah, so it suddenly sort of pops down on the ground. Both of you fall backwards. There's a lot of there's a lot of fluids. There's a lot of horrible, Ooh. horrible things. And um, uh, Tristan sort of disdainfully uses his sword to give a quick slice to the, uh, the central nerve. Um, and the eyeball is now free and yours. Uh, thank goodness you guys have a bag of holding to shove this thing into, um, mm-hmm. because it would make an awful mess in anyone's backpack. So, Lovely. now that you have harvested um, Car is a Car Central Eye. I okay. idly wonder what the random slaves here will do. Actually, that was one of the next things that I was going to bring up, but um, somebody had mentioned looking at the okay, looking at the um, mage, so I want to address that before I forget. Mm-hmm. So you guys know I will times forget. Being like, God damn it, I wanted that scroll. I know, right? <laughs> Let's see here. Possessions. Hmm. Oh. Huh. Okay, so when you make it over to uh, Shidrak's corpse, um, you sort of rifle through the body, and you pull out a potion of healing, um, a labeled potion of poison, and you finally get the opportunity to um, examine the staff. Um Having examined the staff, it is unusual. Uh, it's topped with a varnished beholder eye, and it turns out that that isn't just any eye. Um, it is actually an eye from another beholder's uh, uh, non-central eye, like one of the stalks that's been put on top and then varnished. Um, considering that, you expect it to be magical, but you do a check to see if it is so, and it turns out that the entire thing is non-magical. Um, However, uh, sort of investigating this, um, it appears that had you not disabled Shidrak, um, this eye is capable of channeling one of the eye beams from um, Kazarakar. Karazakar? Hmm. Karazakar. Um, in the event that he had been allowed to live and act. And so those are the possessions. So I'm going to go into the inventory. Uh, Got to kick him a few more times. God fucking damn it. Delete. He's the only really good thing for me. So there's only a potion of po- healing and poison on him. Um, at this point, um, on to either end of the bridge, uh, a series of slaves sort of pile out of, out of various uh, corridors and, and passageways and up tunnels. Um, and all of them... Uh, 
bear that brand of Karazakar on their forehead, those those eyes like um, Shidra had, and uh, Shidrak, I should say. When all of the, the slaves um, are in one place, you start taking basically a census. Uh, there are 21 shield dwarf commoners, 17 human commoners, 11 moon elf commoners, 8 female drow with 1 male drow, 5 deep gnomes, 23 goblins, and 15 orogs. Um, all of these creatures are um, mildly starved, and they're all kind of blinking a bunch it seems that uh car is a car has probably charmed them multiple times over um and so their heads are kind of muddy and swimmy at the moment um one of the shield dwarfs um walks up to you and says thank you so much for saving us we we never thought we'd be free of his of his madness i'm lucky he didn't eat me listen listen up there and he points way up a good 50 feet above your head up there is Karazakar's hidden lair. He used it as his treasure room. And we we frequently had to had to haul treasure up using a pulley, um, which he would take down after after each haul of treasure to get up there. Um, if any of you can reach it, you're welcome to whatever's up there. I cast fly. <laughs> I was gonna say <laughs> <laughs> Hop on up there, either you or Bat. So you you find it disconcerting to sort of fly up into the central eye that you have been uh, uh, seeking uh, this whole time, and it turns out that the uh, pupil of the eye is in fact a hollow shaft. Um, it leads up to a hemispherical vault, and once it once you get kind of get all the way up there, there's not really a good way that a non-flying creature could could ascend this way. Even creatures with wings would have difficulty. So nothing is kind of like in a chest or anything. Um, in fact, there's no storage up here whatsoever aside from the floor itself. Um, you take a while, like a real long while, to kind of count all of the stuff that you find in this particular hoard. And you find... 1,300 platinum pieces and 15,000 gold pieces. Whoa. There are three Damn. magical items also up here. Um, while I'm sure that you want to identify them, uh, the fly spell has a 10-minute time limit on it, and you do kind of have to get all this shit out as well. Uh, mm. So you spend um, some of the time using, like, rugs and, and, you know, other things to sort of load it up as much as you can carry, bring it down, pile it up on the bridge and then go back up there and you have to take multiple trips back and forth and you um, basically run right up to the time limit. Um, now that you've all gotten down to this, uh... huh? Not that it would, but very crafty way to prevent magic item theft. What do you mean? Oh, just that uh, at no point is a singular party member left alone with all the magic items, etc., cetera, et cetera. That's actually pretty cool. <laughs> So uh, all in all, uh, you end up pulling everything down. You also find that there are 10 highly valuable gemstones. Each gemstone is worth 500 gold pieces each. Um, now that you are down um, with everything else, you're going to cast your identify spells. You find a necklace of adaptation. While wearing this necklace, you can breathe normally in any environment. You have advantage on saving throws made against harmful gases and vapors like cloud kill and stinking cloud effect, inhaled poisons, and the breath weapons of some dragons. I'm wondering who would get that. Um, I've you... already got my attunement full. So. Well, let's get all three of these things in here, and then you can see if you want to shoulder these. Next, you find the Gem of Seeing. It is a rare gem. Uh, it has three charges, and as an action, you can speak the gem's command word and expend one charge. For the next 10 minutes, you have true sight out to 120 feet when you peer through the gem. Uh, the gem regains 1d3 charges daily at dawn. Does anybody not know what true sight is? Me. Okay. Spells. I believe this is a wizard oh, spell. I could have done that. True. It helps if you spell it right. True seeing. 
This spell gives the willing creature you touch the ability to see things as they actually are. For the duration that the creature has true sight, it notices secret doors hidden by magic, and you can see into the ethereal plane all out to a range of 120 feet. It also, mm -hmm. although it does not actually list it here, as far as I know, means that you can basically see in any lighting. You can see directly through illusions. Um, and um, I think that's about it. But you have to, like, use an action to look through it, right? Mm hmm Oh, I see. Speak the command word. Okay. Yeah, you speak the command word, and you can see through it. And then it's just kind of like... Yes, it does. Yeah. So what, that's unfortunate. What does, it, what does attunement mean? Uh, so in order to um, somewhat limit the, the power of adventurers, so you don't literally just accumulate so many magical items as to be invulnerable, um, certain items require attunement, and they're usually very powerful items. Um, you have a maximum of three items with which you can be attuned total. Um, oh, oh, okay. Yeah, so you it will say on an item whether or not it requires attunement, and generally speaking, on your character sheet somewhere, you should just sort of note how many items you're attuned with. Um, because then when it comes to like this gem of seeing, for example, someone has to make a decision if they have three, do I want to cease being attuned to one thing to attune to this? Now, it's not a permanent thing. You can swap these items around whenever you want, but you have to know what you're attuned with, and you can't swap it out in the middle of combat. Okay. Um, so that's that. And then the last item. How ironic. The robe of eyes. This robe is adorned with um, eye-like patterns. While you wear the robe, you gain the following benefits. The robe lets you see in 360 degrees, and you have advantage on perception checks that rely on sight. You have dark vision out to a range of 120 feet, 360 degrees. You can see invisible creatures and objects, as well as into the ethereal plane out to a range of 120 feet. Um, just in case you're wondering, the ethereal plane is the plane in which ghosts occupy. So if they aren't showing up for creatures on the material plane, they're sort of hiding in the ethereal plane, which overlaps this one. And then they pop into the material plane to try to survive, uh, surprise you. So you can see ghosts when they're not on the same plane as you. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay. Um, up to 120 feet. The eyes on the robe can't be closed or averted, although you can close or avert your own eyes, but you are never considered to be doing so while wearing this robe. Um, a light spell cast on the robe or daylight spell cast within five feet causes you to be blinded for one minute. At the end of each of your turns, you can make a con saving throw and it gives specific numbers versus various spells, ending the blindness on a success. This also since your eyes can't be closed or averted, would be horrific if you came up against a Medusa. Mm. Right. So that's that. So. Um, are... hmm? uh, I wanted to ask, uh, are the surviving less scorched eye stalks uh, potent alchemical ingredients, and can we, like, harvest them? Or... Hmm. Like I realize it is what's left of the beholder is a crispy critter, but still. Mm -hmm. Ah. Okay. Okay, um, that's pretty much what I thought. Say that again. Uh, I didn't. Fin I didn't actually say anything. I was just scanning this to make sure that there's nothing additional. I want to make sure I have all the info before I. Okay. okay. Um, to the best of your knowledge, they have no specific um, magical item use. Like, it could, for example, be said that like you could use it in place of another material. Like, if you wanted to create a wand of petrification, maybe that particular eye stalk mm -hmm. would be useful in that. However, it's not an official part of the recipe for the wand of petrification. Do you know what I mean? Right. So, since beholders don't 
normally die. Like, they usually kill a lot of things before they get taken down. Um, nobody really has much opportunity to experiment with them, so at the moment, they'd probably be worth nothing more than a, a, a curiosity fee for someone to experiment with. Well, I mean, we could give a few of them to our uh, our benefactor with this Tower of Vengeance, so that once the vengeance part is done, he like mess with it in his at at his leisure. Ah, uh, sure. If you want to do that, yeah. I mean, why not? Okay. So, otherwise. in light of that, uh, does anyone specifically want the Gem of Seeing? <sighs> Nope. So that's going to Melrath for storage. <laughs> Melrath will get these gems. Necklace of Adaptation allows you to breathe. Melrath it is. Uh, Potion of Healing. Melrath, Melrath it is. Mm, yeah. Potion of Poison. Give it to... I don't know. Maybe, Melrath. I guess. Oh, oh. Uh, Tasman. There we go. Robe of Eyes. Melrath it is. Okay, so then distribute everything else. Um, Bob, add four platinum. Pe Wait, yes, four platinum pieces to your inventory. Dios mío, I just got a shit ton more. Yes, you did. <clears throat> well, it's 21 plus 4. 25. I do want one of the eye items, but I just wanted to make sure that no one else didn't want one of them first. So. Oh, okay. The poison potion was not identified. Oh. So. Uh, Melrath. Inventory. I'm not Melrath. Oh, sorry. I th everything else went damn. I forgot. Tazara. So do one or, or both of them see invisible? Or did I miss that? One or both of what? Of the eye, well, the vision item C. Oh, uh, both of them invisible. do. The the, of them. Okay. the robes re would replace any armor you wear, but the um, gem could just be stored in a pocket to be pulled out for use. Oh, okay. Okay. Good to know. Uh, oh, thank you, Eric. Uh, potion here. Well, unless someone's opposed, um, I think Snake would do well with the robe. Go for it. Okay. Okay. Because uh... I know Tristan can has uh, C invisibility. So. Okay. Yeah, but I also have the divination ability that allows me to do it. Whenever All right. I... Here's the here's the thing for it, Eric. Just delete it from your inventory. Yep. Thank you. I am also unattuning my Pawafi because I was at my limit. Okay. Um, does anybody specifically want the gem of seeing since we're mentioning these things? I'm all attuned up. Okay. Um, I know that we're 15 minutes over. There's one last little thing that I need to mention. Actually, you know what? That's role-playing stuff. We can, we can do that next time. Uh, just remind me that there's a prisoner that you guys need to talk to. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. Then um, that should do it. Level up.